So, uh, John, I think it's, it's fair to say you devised this whole day today, really, didn't you? It's your, it was your idea. Yes, it was. I mean, I, I'm a trustee of the cemetery. The cemetery is run by the Friends of Highgate Cemetery, and we have 12 trustees. And um, because I'm one of them, I'm always looking for marriages between the, the beauty of this place and its inherent theatricality, because I'm a theatre man. And the... Um, Bicentenary of Dickens seems a perfect moment to celebrate yeah. because of the parents' grave being here and Catherine's grave and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and it, was it a successful day for you? I think it was a wonderful day. What was I found particularly moving was that Mark Dickens was here for the first time ever and he's the great-great-grandson of Charles Dickens. And so he was here on a, a rather reverent mission. Yes. But we had two great larger-than-life Shakespearean actors, Simon Callow and Joe Lumley, doing the Micawbers, yeah. who are a sort of highly exaggerated version of the Dickens' parents. So it was lovely to get Dickens' own um, sense of comedy and life and passion on the yes. one hand, and then get the real reverence of his of his ancestor visiting on the other. It was a beautiful and mixture. And that, that was very touching because uh, he, he wanted to visit um, Dickens' wife's grave Especially, most of all. Especially, I think, yes. I, it, it's strange, isn't it, that the Dickens family as they exist today seem to have a real, I wouldn't say a sense of guilt, but certainly a sense of responsibility for the way that their great genius ancestor treated his wife. Yeah. Um, she, she had a pretty tough time. Sure. And, um, and there she is, buried all on her own with their infant daughter, Dora, who died at eight months, in a big vault that was supposed to be where he was to be buried. Yeah. And in the end, he wasn't buried there. Right. And, and, and I wonder if it, if it wasn't for Poets' Corner, if he would have been buried there, given that it wasn't his... No, he, he, he divorced her. I think even more sadly, he, he, he never actually divorced her, but he moved away to Rochester. And I think after he moved to Gads Hill in Rochester, he felt that he wanted to be buried there. He felt that he wasn't really a London boy, he was a Rochester right, boy. Right. And so, although he devised Highgate Cemetery as his final um, resting place, his life moved on to such an extent that he wouldn't have been buried here, I don't think. That anyway. was a very touching piece, wasn't it, read around that grave? Because um, uh, talking about immortality, I thought that was, um, you know, there was saying that immortality is really, it, it's, in, it's in other people's minds, it's yes. the, their view of you. And that's exactly what we're experiencing here today. It was a fascinating piece because it's from the end of the novel Old Curiosity Shop. And there's a character in that, Little Nell, and while he was writing Old Curiosity Shop in instalments, his readers could sense that he was going to kill off Little Nell by the end of the novel. Yeah. And they passionately wanted him not to. They wrote him letters, there were articles in the papers, please, you can't kill her, she's too wonderful. And he wrestled with himself. He wrote in his mind a version where she doesn't die. But in the end, his greatness as, as a novelist won out because he knew he had to kill her. He'd been planning to kill her the, off the whole time. And so brilliantly, he set the very last chapter that she's in in the novel in a cemetery that she is given the responsibility of tending. So he was able to write a very tender colloquy on mortality, mm -hmm. on the way cemeteries should make us feel when we visit them, and on the impossibility of important people to us ever being forgotten. Yeah. And, of, of course, it was really based on his daughter's death, wasn't it? Her, her, and her death was inevitable then. I think when his little daughter Dora died at the age of eight months, it had a profound effect on him. And we know he stood up here in the cemetery grieving for his little daughter. Really? And certainly when he came to be um, writing... I mean, all the deaths of children in, in Dickens's novels are, I think... Um, uh, they're in, partly refer to that death. But interestingly, of course, he wrote Old Curiosity Shop before Dora had died. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it was a, it was a prophetic moment of killing off the little yeah. girl. This, this cemetery has gone through a lot of uh, changes. It was uh, obviously when it was first started here in Victorian times, it was a sort of a manicured park, uh, not such a woodland as it is now. And then when you showed me around a few weeks ago, um, his 
uh, Dickens's parents' grave was was at an angle you couldn't even read underneath it and what was on it. And I, and when we went up there today, it was smartly erect. Yes. I mean, so so this is really what you're involved in doing, isn't it? We are trying to restore all the important graves, the graves that are of people who have some importance in history or the arts or whatever. Um, and also the graves, the monuments of particular architectural beauty. We have a responsibility to, to look after them. But we also have the responsibility of keeping this wonderful, mature English woodland with all its ecological sure. beauties intact, because it's the combination of woodland and architectural beauty that makes it such an extraordinary place. Yeah, and really, it's it's a, it's our ideal of the Victorian Gothic, isn't it? Because it wasn't a woodland when people were being buried here no, originally. The reason it's so beautiful is because it was neglected for 50 years, right. and that's the lovely irony. If it had been properly looked after ever since Dickens's time, it would look like San Michele in Venice or Père Lachaise in yes. Paris. It would look manicured and, and beautifully looked but after. But managed decay isn't good enough, is it? No, it, we. I mean, we, we've. It, it was so badly neglected that it became this marvelous mixture of woodland and 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 heritage site. Yeah. And that's we now have to manage to keep it like that. We need to manage the balance. Which, you know, it seemed to suit Dickens so much today, the sort of our concept of, of, of the Gothic, I suppose, that we, we, we recognise through Dickens. But I also thought what, what today was good at, for what the experience gave me, was that I had to work to, um, to think about Dickens. I had to, we had to trudge up through the snow, we were all <laughs> holding hands, and, yeah. and there was an effort being made yes. to get to the different <clears throat> graves. And I think that, um, that, that sense of pilgrimage um, can only be found with a bit of struggle. Yes, I felt the same. I felt that there was a, there was a lovely sense of camaraderie of us all being yeah. Dickensians together. And some great English writers here today as well. Wonderful. I mean, we have here five or six very great English novelists buried, female novelists. We have George Eliot, Stella Gibbons, Radcliffe Hall, Beryl Bainbridge, yeah. um, Christina Rossetti. Yes, of we have Lizzie Siddle, who is, who is Dante Gabriel Rossetti's great muse. Who, who, whose grave was exhumed at one point. Y indeed. But today we had also Audrey Niffenegger, Tracy Chevalier and Sarah Waters, three of the greatest female novelists in the world today, who, who came here to... And Howard observe, Jacobson was here. And Howard Jacobson, a great, a great London novelist. writer. Exactly, a sort of a, a, yeah. a, very, a very Dickensian exactly. torch bearer. Yeah. So anyway, we've got, a, we've got a few more years for the next literary bicentennial, I take it. You, you may be around. There are there. so many people <laughs> buried here that I think we could have a centenary or a bicentenary every day. Right, right. <laughs> Most of the people here are not famous. But that's the other wonderful thing about this place, is that the very famous and the completely unknown are buried side by side. Sure. Death is a leveller, sure. and it's wonderful the way the trees grow out of the bodies of the famous and the unfamous in exactly the same way. Well, also, you must, we <clears throat> mustn't forget that this is a place of mourning even now, because young people are buried here today. They are, you know, I mean, they, they are. It, Little it, children are buried here, and great artists of today. We have Patrick Caulfield buried here, Corin Richardson, uh, Corin Redgrave is buried here very recently. Um, you know, many wonderful... Um, Actors and writers are, are, are buried here every year. Right, we better hurry up and find our plot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John.